welcome back to painting and decorating. Now, I'm back on this job. About to change this wallpaper. Um, so, when you first turn up on a job, the first thing you want to do is put your overalls on and then sort out any furniture and then get your dust sheets down. So, I'll show you some of my gear, what I've brought in, and then you'll see it after the dust sheets are down. I brought some dust sheets in and then I put my two my box and stuff on the dust sheets. Um, I already had some paste mixed, so I've got that there in the green bucket and I've got another bucket for water for washing down or uh, stripping the paper off and letting it soak. You know, you need a bit of water and then for wiping off any paste in the end. Um, I've also got some cloths, a bin bag, the tool box and the papering box and I've got plenty of dust sheets and the, my paste bench. So I'll set these sheets up now. Not forgetting the really important bit is uh, my six inch flat brush used to strip the paper and used to put the paste on. My dust sheets are down and what I've done is the one near the fireplace is doubled up to protect that brick and I'll probably put another one on top of that and put a couple in the front to kneel on uh, folded up. Now these two dust sheets because there's two there one on top of each other. I've opened them up um, so you've got no trip hazard when you're walking around. Um, the paste bench is going to go at this point and I'll put um, a dust sheet over the corner of that table there and then I should be okay. Now first off strip that paper bucket of warm soapy water with my flat brush and a cloth, my bin bag, and various scrapers, every paper is different. Um, I've stripped that many, I generally know what they're going to be like. Um, that's usually the best one for me to use for this type of paper. Um, Usually it peels off quite easy on the front, we'll have a look at that in a minute. And then you just wet the back of uh, the backing that's left on. Leave it five minutes and then just scrape that off. So I'll put these away, but some papers, anaglyptas and things like that, you need a heavier scraper. Which that's what these are for, different blade bits on the front. Okay. Right, so usually when you come to strip some paper like this, you find where there's a loose corner at the bottom. Um, now here is quite easy because it's just tucked under the bottom. The paper's because a little bit, um, the plasterboard's not finished right to the bottom, let's say. So when you paper this, you've got to paper slightly over and then round the underneath. Oh, right. How easy is that? Now, sometimes I lie that down at the bottom and it collects all the rubbish and soaks up the water as well when, when it drips. So I'll just do another piece there.
and then take your flat brush. And you don't want to be getting water everywhere, so. I get right to the edges and then uh, allow it to soak and then put another bit of water on and repeat that process a few times over an area and then leave it 10 minutes I'll finish wetting this in and then I'll leave it 10 minutes we'll come back to it while that's soaking I've put my base bench up and I've got my uh, tools out to see, show you what I'm using. Now, I've got paper and scissors and a snap blade because you always need both. Clean cloth to wipe the paste off using clean water. And then I've got my paper hanging brush because I, I never use a spatula. There could be an occasion where you're using a really tough paper that you might use a spatula, but generally I use uh, my paper hanging brush. Spirit level, sorry, spirit level. Tape measure, uh, a couple of pencils. Hard lead is best because it doesn't break up and get um, on the paper and mix with the paste. Plum bob and spirit level. You can use a laser if you want, um, but I hardly ever use that. In fact, I've used it a couple of times and find it a bit difficult to be fair. Well, useless. Yeah. Um, and my paper. Got my paste down there. I usually have my book, my toolbox at the side of my bench, and I'll put some paper over the top of that, and I put my paste on top, so I'm not having to dip further down. Saves you back. Right, this will be ready to show. You. can pull the paper off once it's got so wet but depending on the wall sometimes there's loads of lumps on the wall and nibs so as I'm actually scraping I'll scrape off any lumps and nibs But because I've done this before, I know it's pretty perfect. I'm just gonna pull it all off. So I'm gonna finish stripping this off, wipe round the edges with a cloth, allow it to dry, and then give it a light sand. And it's ready to paper really, because I sealed it last time. This is the paper they chose, Tan Lay. Now, it's a brick effect. Uh, the only problem is the cement lines, the wrong colour, but you can't have everything, can you? Um, problems with some of these papers is when they shrink wrap the ends, it can damage the uh, paper on the first two foot so what I usually do open this up take your time as well opening these because sometimes the way they wrap them the plastic goes under the paper you always want to keep the instructions um, 
Dokładnie. There's not much information on there. I think it's going to be self-explanatory. Uh, some of the symbols are different than I'm used to, the, ch the changing stuff. Um, but it looks like a straight match. Paste the paper. Right, along the back, we've got a few instructions on the back as well. Um, I'm looking for the soaking time. Apply generous and an even layer of paste. Soak for five minutes. There you go. But you always keep them. And if you've got loads of rolls, you want to uh, double check the batch numbers on them to make sure they're all the same shade and pattern. Let's have a quick look. Right, like I say, usually the first bit's damaged, so I always cut a little bit off. Um, so it because <clears throat> you don't actually use all the roll, you always end up with a little bit left at the end, so I cut it off at the beginning. So that was on top of the toolbox and the paste goes on top of there. Right. So I already know the wall is four foot on the length I want, but I also need to make sure that the four foot drops in between the cement lines correctly on the wall so it could end up slightly different than what you was expecting what I'm going to do let's just show you on the wall I've got a spirit level which I'm actually going to use today I'm going to double check the cement line going across to the other one it's more than likely going to be okay, but you better double checking stuff. That's not too bad, that. I'm doing this one again. Right, I'm going to pencil a line across there and show you. So I'll we'll the pencil line off the bottom of the cement line and it's not too bad, it's, it just runs slightly into the middle of that one. But that's good, that's okay. So when you're doing wallpaper, especially feature wall, you need to work out the pattern correctly. So, you know, every paper is different, you know, as you can tell on this one. The other one was a geometric pattern, um, and this is just brick. So, on the brick on the fireplace, as it's coming down, you get little bits of the brick, half a brick or a quarter of a brick. So, what I'm going to do is measure from the top on this side down to that half a brick there and then work out on the paper here measuring down to a full brick so then when it goes up it'll sit against it and it should look better so what you want to do measure the width of your paper and measure out leaving yourself a little bit to cut off on the quarter of an inch overlap plumber line down so on this one the paper is 21 inches wide so what I'm going to do is on the wall where the paper dips in 
I'm going to measure out from that point 21 inches. Because I know then, if I do that, anything kind of this way, there will be excess paper that I can trim off, so I won't have a problem, because I've done it from the deepest point. So I'm going to plumb my line from there. Now what that allows is, that deepest point, I more than likely won't have to trim any off, because the paper does actually expand slightly so I know for a fact it should be perfect there I've done this but that makes sense and then plumb your line you don't need loads of marks but enough to follow room just gets wrapped up, goes in my pocket and wherever I am in the room that's with me. Alright, so I'm ready to cut my first piece measuring from that top down to that half a brick into the centre of it which is 11 inches. So then on here I find a full brick and measure up 11 inches um, and that'll do there because there's plenty of over, overlap as well to trim off so I'm marking at that one I won't have to mark it because I just know but what I, what I can do now when that comes back what I can do now is from that 11 point mark up here and measure the four foot down. And then cut across. And that's my first length. Like I say, this is a straight match. So following the exact pattern, there, uh, find it. You've got to be careful though because they are different bricks slightly. So there can be a lot of waste in that actually. That's the one. You, you know, always make sure you double check everything. I'm saying I only need three lengths and the third one's going to get sp uh, split. And then pull that over and put that waste off. Some papers can have loads of waste. enough because I know I've got plenty to cut off and what I usually do is mark the back of each one across this just always helps me know which end of the paper I'm using even when I cut a strip off then what I want to do Carefully roll the paper up the other way, and I mean carefully. And then lightly press down on it. Some papers are really tough, 
and they just don't want to do this and spring back on you anyway. Sorry about that, I just caught the leg on the camera stand. Anyway, you get the idea then. Just text the memory out the paper so you can paste each leg. Now, I'm just going to leave them like that. And the first one, I'm going to offer up to that edge of the bench. When you're pasting, always just paste away like that. Never pull the brush back and get paste under the paper. So, I'm only going to paste one at a time because there's a bit of trimming up on the uh, first one. And depending on what you're doing, I'll paste one put that up and then I might paste three for the next run. Um, depends how much trimming you've got on each one. If you've got loads of trimming, just paste one at a time. Give yourself some breathing space. Um, plenty of paste is the key. Sometimes, you know, a couple of passes is the best. The first pass with the paste, it soaks in. The second pass tops it up. So, if you're trying to rush this process, you're going to end up with no paste on your paper. You know the easy way. Always make sure there's no bits in your paste or brush hairs off the brush. Stand that like a sore thumb on the wall once it's dry. Now that's ready to soak. Five minutes on the timer. That's the timer up. Ready to go up. Always the longest fold is usually the top. Release that. Now, never stick your paper just fully onto the wall. Always try and halve it and then find your plumb line. And I know more or less how much overhang I've got on that um, because I need to match it up to this side. So I can't hang that bit first. So you just kind of need to know where it is more or less. Now, paper hanging brush, I followed the plumb line down and now I'm just going to brush the paste, sorry, the err uh, from out the back, not the paste. It's just so you know I've got any bubbles. Now I'm just going to check that line. Now that needs to go up. There we go, following the uh, line. I should have done that. Perfect. Now, be careful when you're pushing your paper into the corners because usually if they're all shapes and your paper's not tough, you end up tearing it. Just going to release that bottom fold there. When you're papering, that last bit is crucial for your next lengths. It's all got to be plumb, because you can find if you rush that bottom bit, you'll put a piece on at the top and then you've stretched or pushed the bottom bit slightly. <coughs> so then you're running out constantly up the wall. So, careful with that. Although it's different, it's a coloured brick, it's not looking too bad. It's 
definitely better than the other paper. Now the ceiling's like a dog leg up there. So to allow the paper to run up that dog leg, I'm going to put a relief cut in it. And everywhere else it's not too bad. Just a couple here. Now I'm going to cut across the ceiling first. There's a few ways you can, you can use your snap blade and using your finger on the paper first you can draw along and use your fingers on the ceiling and the wall as a guide. It takes a bit of practice that one. You can also use a straight edge but again sometimes ceiling lines aren't straight and if you cut the paper straight and then stick it back you have little gaps missing or it's like an optical illusion as if you've cut too much paper off. So we're usually following ceiling lines and um, if they're not that out is the best way rather than using a, a full straight edge. Now you can also mark it on this side of the paper with a pencil but you've got to be really careful about like getting the pencil line on the upside and not on the face of the side of the wall so then you actually cut the pencil line off so you've not got a pencil line left um, the usual method we use is marking the paper with the back of your scissors or with a, a, a more of a, a blunt instrument to actually mark it across underneath I'm just going to use my blade on the back edge And you've got to be really careful and peel it back and what you'll find on there is a line going up that you can follow and usually this is the method we use rest of the other side from that side. Well, first of all I'm going to mark down this brick but I am going to use the pencil this time um, because I think it's going to be the easiest way. bottom before I cut the top that side. Like I say it uh, drops off and goes underneath so you need to leave a bit to cut round underneath. So I'll just tuck it slightly under and then trim it across. Say so you want to cut off your pencil line that you've put on.
I've got to make tissue paper this paper now, so <laughs> one false move and it's going to wreck. that top bit across. Yep. Um, don't want to get paste on the front of the paper so I'll just lightly push it back using your brush making sure there's no bubbles. Bottom bit tucks underneath, disappears. That's good. And then up the side, just gently wipe the brick to get any paste off the brick. Whilst pushing the paper in. paste on that ceiling bit there. Now the paper's just tore a little bit in that corner, so I just need to make sure the turrs are facing the right way. Because sometimes, depending on which way it overlaps, it will show a turr. You overlap it the other way and it disappears. Go. On with the next piece. I'm going to paste that now, let it soak, and then I'll show you trimming off as well. Uh, sorry, I'll show you the um, cutting of the splitting of the length, I should say. That's the timer. Ready for the next lamp. Really important to get your timing right on your paper. Now, I've actually pasted the two lengths remaining because this one goes up really quick. There's only the top and bottom to cut. Release your paper, fold it slightly in the center, and don't play it all to the wall. Find where your pattern is first. The ceiling drops there, so there's more overhang. Take your time with the pattern and using your fingers you can feel for if it's overlapped. The paper should always just be butt up to each other, should never actually overlap. Now this is quite an awkward one to match because there's the other line you can look at, but everything's waving. That's not too bad. Just wipe a bit. There's a bit of paste there, so I'll wipe that off for this. Now you can finish off putting your paper on at the top. Paste there. It's important to wipe any paste off and get on the paper. You don't want to gain it all over your brush. And then there's the final adjust on that. Brush it out. Side to side, never go up and down. You stretch the paper and push the bubbles about in the centre. It's always side to side. Check your pattern again. That's why you need plenty of paste on so you can adjust the paper. It slips on the wall very easily. I'm just going to put a couple of leaf cuts up there.
I'm going to finish this bottom before I trim the top. scissors following the ceiling line. Where your paper actually meets the other paper, the, the cut across them two has got to be bang on. If one is slightly above, you know exactly where the joint is, so they've got to be perfect. Which is easy enough because you just start from the other side and pull along onto your next one, so you know exactly where it is. Bottom up and not overlapped anywhere. And then just trim the bottom off and then you're ready for the next piece. I'll show you splitting that on the bench in a minute. Taking the measurements on the wall, you want to find your deepest point on the wall so you have enough paper. So sit into that deepest point and then you can trim off the rest. You also want to make sure you're trimming off the correct side of your paper, right and left and all that. So I've made sure I know that's going to be my next plumb line. I've also measured the wall and it's eight inches that I require. So using my finger up to the eight inch mark, you know, because you've got a bit of leeway of um, your trimming off, so as long as it's near enough, it's, when you get used to it, it's pretty much bang on. And then taking your pencil on the side, uh, side of the bench with your finger, pencil, side of the tape measure, and then just draw it down the paper. You can just see a fine line. Down there. Now, when you're cutting it, keep your scissors on the bench. Don't be doing that. stick it up. Now I'm going to stick that up and then I'll show you the finished bit. There you go, all done. How great does that look? You know sometimes it just takes another look at something to make you realise how perfect something can be because the other one, oh it's no good. This, perfect that. So I'll just give you a close look. I mean, 
obviously different shade of brick, different shade of uh, cement line, but it looks really good, I think, compared to the other one. And uh, I hope my customer's going to be happy. Yeah, but what do you think of your wallpaper? Yeah, but what about the wallpaper? Welcome to eternal damnation! Watch your step. I know, but what about the wallpaper? Oh, you look like death! And that says a lot coming from me! One track, mind.